Hi there, Grade Twelves, and welcome to e-communications module two point three. Now, remember, when we talk about e-communications, we are talking about electronic forms of communicating, and that is communication on the whole. So, we're going to look at a few things, and without further ado, let's jump in. Now, there are certain strengths and advantages of digital communication. I mean, think of maybe 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, if you can't speak to someone who can, <laughs> and you'll see and realize that it's easier for us to communicate digitally these days. We can connect and communicate worldwide. Um, it's used where you are on multiple devices, faster than conventional means. You know, there, there are a number of advantages. And just remember this, how many of these do we really need to know? How many? Two, okay? Obviously, with any strengths and advantages, there are going to be weaknesses and disadvantages. So the same is going to apply. Everything with digital communication is going to depend on your internet speed and coverage. Like if you've got no internet wherever you are, you're not going to be able to do anything. Okay. Um, it requires other people to be connected digitally as well. It can be expensive. And uh, this would depend obviously on the data costs to depend on where you are. Um, you might need some extra hardware. It, it really depends um, on where you are in the scheme of things. So please just two each and you should be good to go there. Now, there are some good practices to use when you are dealing with digital communication. Please keep time zones in mind. Like not everybody's in your time zone. You need to keep dif differences in bandwidth in mind. I might have super fast internet speed and someone else might not. Um, those of you who do online gaming, yeah, you, you usually see this, and I see this with my sons when they play FIFA. If they if they play an online match and their internet speed is good, sometimes the other guy doesn't have good internet speed and you will actually see him lag on the screen or he'll go like AFK. Um, so, yeah, we just need to keep that in mind. Then, digital communications are largely impersonal and faceless. Well, a lot of it is... Um, I've been done with video conferencing now, so we can see that. And once you, hmm, here we go. Once you've said or typed something, you generally can't undo it. And this is because the internet is a very public sp space, a very public place. Please think before you post. I mean, that just goes without saying. All right, so these are just some good practices. Again, two or three should be fine. And then we look at the uses of digital communication. Now, I'm going to go fairly quickly through this because we are fairly familiar with this. The first one is, is email. So most of us by now should know what email is. It's the composing, sending, and receiving of messages electronically over a network, including the internet. We can use examples like Gmail. And, and please, just with this, don't, if we ask you, um, what is email? What is its purpose? Tell me Gmail and Outlook. No. No, no, those are examples of um, email programs. But what it is, it's the composing, sending, and receiving of messages electronically over a network, including the internet. Right? Remember, the internet is a global network. We have um, email calendars. And again, you can just, you know, have a look through all of these things. Your email's got calendars. It's usually got tasks that you can put in there. Um, and you can assign a due date. Um, a lot of people are using the the Google suites now where you you've got your Google calendar you've you, you know you've got all these different things in there um, but you can just go through this please remember when we talk about archiving what did we say archiving is this is where we are moving messages from one location to another to use it at a later stage so when I'm archiving emails I'm, I'm doing exactly the same thing right the principle still applies. Then we have social networking sites. I really don't need to go into this. <laughs> you know too much on these things. Um, it does help us to stay in touch and communicate with others all over the world. You can advertise and market products, network people with similar interests, um, and communicate news about an organization. What, I'm, what I find so interesting about social media, and this is like all the different platforms, is how quickly information gets out. Like something happens and people are all over you know, Facebook, TikTok, um, all of this, you know, giving their particular spin on things. And you've also got blogs and vlogs. 
some people still doing um, a lot of blogs. This was just your your online diary where you are just typing out everything, giving you know um, maybe your opinion about things, writing about your everyday life, whatever it is. A lot of people have moved on to vlogs where you are doing a video blog, right? It's exactly the same thing. And a lot of YouTubers um, are doing this for a living, right? A lot of folks on on uh, TikTok doing exactly the same thing. So please know the difference between blogs and a vlog, right? Here they mentioned to us blogs are used by people and organizations to do what? To share personal experiences, to do some citizen journalism, news blogs, corporate information blog sites, right? Um, they do go into a little bit of info as to how to, to publish it. Please just know, I would say of this, um, websites and just know, I'd say two examples of websites that allow you to create a blog. WordPress is probably the most common one. But if you know of anyone that's not even listed here, and it's a valid one, as I always say, then you can use it. One of the biggest things to come through are podcasts. Now, podcasts used to be just um, an audio or in audio format. Um, they have moved over now to, you know, the uh, video as well. But in essence, a podcast is an audio file. It can be downloaded. You can have a subscription service to a particular podcast. And it's usually produced by professionals, but also amateurs. These days, anyone can pull off a podcast. If you've got a microphone, um, if you've got a cell phone, you can really do it. You can do it on the go. You can set up anywhere as well. There are, as I mentioned earlier, video podcasts, and those are called vodcasts. And these will include um, video clips like with uh, Joe Rogan and some of the others. You'll actually see the podcast and not just have it be audio. So... Yes, it can be used to download radio shows say for educational purposes. Um, there, there are so many different things that one can do um, with these podcasts. Okay, Then we have wikis. So please understand what a wiki is. Number one, it allows for the collaborative. Collaborative, this means there are a number of folks coming together to edit and create the content on these web pages. It takes the form of a web page access is usually free so it can be used to create company intranets remember what an intra intranet not internet intranet community websites making checklists of things to do um, creating reference sites as well come in mm. okay no, no, come, come, come. Um, I just wanted to check the one thing I haven't done is fill in these. So I've done all the actual okay. Okay. moderation. Um, do you want me to do just pre? Just pre. Okay. So yeah. then, um, um, I'll just fill in the hmm. these, drop them here. Okay. No, no problem. Right, then we have our GPS technology as well, and this we find on our smartphones, cameras, I mean, a whole range of devices these days. Some businesses even use this GPS technology to allow their users to earn loyalty points when they pick up that they are in a particular area or near a particular shop. There's also targeted advertising. And this is when businesses send out unique advertising to their customers as they enter the vicinity of the shop. Do you see how that goes with the previous point, right? Now, why do I have this image on the screen? We've got smartwatches, you've got a GPS over here. It used to be a device on its own, okay? Um, for those of you who are not that old, um, uh, a GPS device used to be a physical device on its own. Um, now it's built into really everything we, do, <laughs> we work with. So, we have this term called geotagging. This is a term that comes up often, right? Um, it's shown itself in the June exam, September, November, and they will give you a picture. They might show you something uh, that goes with that, and then they'll ask you um, to define what geotagging is. So here they tell us geotagging or GPS photo tagging, right? We just spoke about GPS. It's the process of embedding information called Metadata, this is also a term that we know, about the location to digital media like websites, videos, and photographs. 
The information in a geotag may include place coordinates, bearings, distances, or even place names. So you might end up taking a picture, and if the geotag is enabled, it will record you know, when that photo was taken, where it was taken, um, etc. Now, this information, they might ask you, why would geotagging be used? Well, it can be used by search engines to make connections between the image and the location that the images show or where and when it was taken by contributing to the website's SEO. You can also use this feature so that when, you know, if you've gone um, on a tour or something like that, or you've gone traveling, uh, when you come back from, from that uh, traveling expedition or uh, that, that tour, you can then organize your photos based on where they were taken um, and also when they were taken. So nice feature, but just, you know, we don't want everything to be shared. Then using the web efficiently. Now we know how to use our web browser. Please, at this stage, you should know the difference between a web browser and a website. A web browser is a piece of software that program or application or piece of software allows you to navigate, view and interact with the content on the web. Mozilla Firefox, Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, or Microsoft Edge. That is what allows you to navigate through the internet. Through that, you can have bookmarks or favorites. You can go and scratch in the history, which is a very dangerous thing for teenagers. But anyway, um, the history to see what you've been doing for the last couple of months or weeks or days. There are also pop-up blockers. Now, these are usually little extensions that you can add to your browser. And um, they allow you to limit or block most pop-ups. You can even block certain websites. So that, that piece of software does a lot for you. Um, it does some caching as well, where they temporarily store web documents such as HTML pages and images on the disk. What does that mean? It means the web pages load quicker. And then here's another term that always comes up, browser plugins. And here they give us a couple of examples of some browser plugins. Now, web pages sometimes contain specialized content. Okay. And it would need a plugin that is usually free. So this is a little piece of software that is then installed into your browser that adds to its capability, adds to what it can actually do. Here they mention increasingly browsers have the capacity to display the specialized content without the need for plugins. Why? Because a lot of the stuff is built in to some of the newer browsers or when browsers are updated. Then you have browser add-ons or extensions. These are third-party apps that are downloaded to extend the functionality beyond browsing. So, translator utilities, ad blockers, citation add-ons, video capturers. These are all add-ons. And then the last thing um, that they do mention is just some new trends and technologies. We know there's a lot of talk about um, chatbots. So, please just understand what a chatbot is. Number one, it is a software application that's used to carry out online conversations using text or voice commands. Okay, this is not a person that's behind it. This is usually AI driven software. So based on what you are typing in, this AI will then work out to see um, what it should be answering you. Many of you have worked with ChatGPT, right, where you can actually chat to it. Okay, obviously that, that's got a whole, lot of in, a whole lot more information behind it. But with your chatbots, customers can interact with the chatbot to gain answers to product queries, acquire product-related information, and book appointments with a product specialist. So it'll have a certain um, way that it's been programmed to be able to interact with the individual. All right, then they just mentioned also under trends and technologies, just when it comes to these different items like mobile connectivity, we find that devices are small. Connectivity is not limited to one particular place. Smartphones have many apps on them. They're always on connectivity. So we're finding that a lot of devices, a lot of computing devices now are wanting to be mobile, always on increased bandwidth, digitization of media. So a lot of what we are doing, I mean, a lot of the books I'm reading, I'm listening to, because I'm going on to Spotify, I'm getting different uh, audio books. And as I'm driving around, I'll, I'll be listening to this. 
and then also distributed processing and storage, which means I can now store um, my files, you know, on any sort of cloud storage or things like that. So these are the, the sort of trends that you'll see coming through on all the different um, computing devices that we have today. And that then brings us to the end of module 2.3.